Hello everyone, my name is Flair Bliss and welcome back to Katara Sojo. We took a short break away from this game in order to go through the recently released Doki Doki Literature Club Plus of the time of this recording. Ask about the library. Oh yeah, is there a library in the school? Lately I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives a kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile again. There is! It's in the second floor. We can show it to you sometime. Thanks. I return to my food while the girls talk between themselves. Mish and Shishini sign back and forth very animatedly, throwing sideways glances at me, but Mish refrains from translating because it's a private conversation between the two of them. Right, I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to startle you, Hanico. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It, it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't like it's okay, but I'll let it slide. So, um... Do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit, but finally she nods just a little. Uh, okay. I take a seat next to her and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi? Never heard of it. So, uh, sorry again for starting you. I'm Hi Sal. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I. No. You know. From class, we. Are in the same, same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely audible even in the still library. Nervousness, unfortunately. Somehow I feel that my deliquent impression of her was wrong. Mm. <laughs> Hanako. I'm Hanako. I resist the urge to say, that's a nice name. Just have something to say, but really it's the only thing I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and here I am all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little. Sigh of relief. Uh, yeah, so I try to read the covers and the introduc so introductions of the books I picked up and she buries her face in the book. <laughs> oh dearie me. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still want her direction, and I sneak peeks her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. It's not nice to stare at particular things. After all, I, I realize she's doing the same and only pretending to be immersed in life of pie. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. It's like, please leave me alone, but I don't want to tell you to leave me alone. When our gaze is finally meets, but chain reaction is unstoppable. Oh, she stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I, 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 I've got to go do something. <laughs> Just strings all those words into one word. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair like takeoff catches me so off guard that I didn't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. Hmm, but by the time I reach the counter, she has nowhere to be seen. Lydia and Yuko are happily chatting away. Now that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach of the gills. Hey, did you see, um, a girl ran past here? Um, maybe. What does she look like? Long, dark hair, kind of shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear, Yuko, would you excuse me? I'd better try and find her. Th sure, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right. I'll see you later then. <laughs> I didn't mean to scare our newfound friend. She was indeed cute, but that's not for... Keiji's satisfaction, sorry, Kenji's satisfaction, I've been playing your turn to die recently. And there's a similarly named character. I'm hoping that Hanaka will not shy away. I still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I better say something. Um, hey there, Hanako. <laughs> Hi, Sal. Well, at least she remembers my name. Hey, I just want to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to start you or anything. I'm just new here and I thought I should get to know my classmates. Ah, as Hanako looks up at me, I notice her scarring once more. Uh, it's a little bewildering that you can barely notice it from across the room, but it's so noticeable from close up. Look into her eye rather than her scars, for goodness sakes. Th that's okay. I it was my fault. 
Nah, that wasn't anyone's fault. It just kind of happened. So, are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. Y yes, Lily. Oh, you mean Lily the blind girl? Hanaka only nods in response. And I can't help but wonder if defying people through their disabilities are flux past of the worst kind or just normal here. Mm, I think at first it's easy to identify them as a particular person, but when you learn their name, you just refer them by their name rather than their disability. Because it's better if you define somebody by their personality rather than by their disabilities if they have any. It's like that girl was famous for having scars on her face. No. That person should be famous or apparent for being a kind kindred person, not be defined by a physical or mental disability. I guess that explains why Lee took off after her yesterday. She seemed like a nice girl. Are you two friends? I yes. As if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. I think I'm making her nervous again. I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. N no, that's not it. It's just easy if Lily doesn't come here. How come? Oh, because it's hard to get around the classroom? Not really. Hanako's gaze drifts past my shoulder and towards Shizuni. Shizuni? Hanako nods again. What about her? Don't they get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly, there's a something she doesn't want to talk about. It does make a strange sort of sense. Shizuni and Lily not getting along so well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. It's hard enough talking to Shizni through Misha, even when you can see whose hands are talking. Hanako is so focused on Shizni that I am the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Hello. Lily. Ah, Hanako, good morning. Is the president here? I yes. Hanaka glances over her shoulder at Shizni again as to confirm she can't hear them even though it's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off then. Lee's sighs and tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some kind of amenity between the two. It's intriguing, but that's not really something I'm, I'd ask about. I'm sure if they wanted me to know, then they would tell me. It's only my third day here. I should be trying to make friends, not find out why people are enemies. Exactly. Be neutral to everyone, but also pick a particular side. Either one of these two would be more preferable than the rest of them. Even if people are more tolerable with others, they're still going to get on each other's nerves. Hey Liddy, how are things? I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh my, is that high, Sal? I didn't realise you were here. It seems that Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. S sorry, Lily. I thought you realised. Nah, it's alright, Hanako. Hi, Sal. Please not worry about yesterday. It was just a misunderstanding. If you say so. I'm still working this place out. <laughs> well then, I think you'll find most people here a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you are feeling a little confused, don't, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Um, Lily? Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, Hasao, but we must be off. And Akari doesn't look all that comfortable right here, here right now, and he still seems so embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made an impact, any impact. Mind if I accompany you two? I know I'm kind of pushing it, but Lily hums quietly, still smiling. I'm sure that we could accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at me, sorry, Lily, then at me, and then she freezes wide-eyed. Sure. Well then, shall we go? I'm sure Lily wouldn't do this so easy if she saw how scared Hanako looks, but it can't be helped now. Decline after the deal is sealed would only cause confusion and problems. Exactly. So we leave, all three together. Lily walks beside the wall, letting her cane gently tap against it every now and then. Hanako comes along right beside her, so close that she is practically half-hugging her as they go. Although it must make her walking that much harder, Lee takes it in stride. As we turn around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a steam train. Hanako shrieks a little, my vision briefly goes black. For goodness sakes, Emmy! Ouch. Hi. 
You're the incompetence that did this to us. Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes looking up at me. Hi there, they belong to a perpetrator. A short girl who bumped into me has now fallen down on the hallway floor. She wears a PE uniform and a very worried frown. Yeah, because you wear emotions. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during the lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Or she does, but they are not flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs end in shins and feet made of some black metallic or plastic like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It also makes me forget that my chest is hurting. The girl winces a little, rubs her nose and jumps up. Thanks about that, oh man. Hey, you alright? I'm sorry about that, really. I was looking where I was going. He just came out of nowhere. Sorry. Sorry! She's looking really apologetic in the hurt, in the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forgot about being angry or anything since hurt, hurting puppies are my weak spots. It shouldn't even be a spot to begin with. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Out. I say that, but there's a steam pain growing in my chest, and I know that this is about the biggest possible danger of my condition. Don't overexert yourself. Don't forget your medication. Most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I try to rub my solar plexus to cease the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heartbeat. Oh dear. Goodness sakes, Emmy, you're so irresponsible. It seems normal. Hey, should I get a nurse? The word high-pitched voice of a girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds dumbfounded until I realize I probably looked worse off than I really was. Doubled over myself and looking all tense. Damn, I over-worried about my heart. Uh, no need, I'm fine. Manage to say something in response to pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time, taking a deep breath. She just knocks the wind out of me, big time, but there's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit pretty hard. It's okay. I said I was fine, and nothing's broken. No harm done. That's good, I was. And... Hi, Sal, what happened? She's not quite up to speed for obvious reasons, but she sounds very worried. More than what the situation deserves, really. And for once, it's not Mishra or Shizuni scolding Emmy. Someone just bumped into me. Nothing serious, just winded. Uh, sorry, it's my fault. I was just going to get stuff, some stuff, and I was kind of in a hurry. You shouldn't run in school buildings anyways. That someone here is Emmy, isn't it? The little girl coughs quietly and shuffles her plastic metallic feet, looking down at them before saying anything. Hi, Lily, Hanako. I guess the girls know each other. Do you please try to be more careful? You might be sturdy enough to endure these sorts of accidents, but there are people who aren't. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child caught misbehaving. It's so cute I find myself smiling. I know that. Um, I was just... You're in a hurry. Ah, oh, gotta go. Teacher, I'll ha teacher, I have my head. I promised to help with printouts, but I went running instead, so I've got to change and everything. Oh, goodness sakes. Oh, what do we do before any of us can say a thing? Emmy has already bulged away at even the hallway, eerily quiet. Does that kind of thing happen often around here? There are more rules in Yamako than usually, sorry, than usual for running in corridors. But that rarely stops Emmy, it seems. She shakes her head weakly and offers a slight composed smile. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop her, I'm afraid. Shall we be off, then? Liddy heads off along the hallway and Hanako hurries after her. The route to the two... So, the route to the room with two used for tea is fairly simple to retrace, but, but being still fresh in my mind from yesterday, Liddy and Hanako quickly go about the business of making lunch. Before I can even open my small bag of food, Liddy's busying herself with her thermos and tea bags as Hanako is setting, well, setting up both her lunch boxes. So, is this what you meant by coming here almost every day? Yes, Hanako and I usually have lunch here. It seems both of us, so we ended up using this room regularly. After seeing Hanako's reactions to me over the past couple of days, I can understand why that is a boon. That and Liddy being able to get some quiet away from her class as well. I take my seat last after Liddy's poured the tea for us and sits down. Hmm, now we've got ourselves a new revolution here, and that is the fact that Hanako is... 
well, A, not looking at us, but B, looking probably more nervous than usual. The more time I spend with these two girls, the more I think that they're a perfect foil to Miss you and Shizuny. Even without a voice, Shizuny is direct and brash, and Miss you seems to get along with everyone. On the other hand, Lydia is soft-spoken and relaxed, while Hinako seems to be the shyest girl I've ever met. So, how are you faring your Mako, Haisao? You seem a bit flustered before. Apart from getting lost every now and again, and being crash-tackled outside my classroom, fine I guess. You... you must look pretty hurt before. Are you really... okay? Oh gosh, Hanako is taking concern in our in, uh, newfound acquaintance. For a brief moment, I consider telling Hanako and Lydia about my condition, but then I hold it back. I can't tell why, but for some reason I feel uncomfortable talking about it to these relative strangers, even if they have been pretty friendly. Yeah, it's nothing. I was just a bit startled. Judging from the two girls' expressions, I don't think they're buying it, but in what I assume is their way of respecting my privacy, but don't press the matter. I guess that is one of the unwritten rules around here. Don't ask. Even if people's conditions are obvious like Hanako's, there's still bound to be a story involved exactly. Everyone has things that they don't feel comfortable speaking about, and I think everyone here recognizes that. So, um, how long have you been in this school? You both seem to know your way around pretty well. Um, well, I've been here since the start of high school, but only moved into the dormitories a year ago. Hanako joined at the start of high school as well, and moved to the dormitories when she did, if memory serves me right. That's right, since high school. So you've known each other since then? <laughs> since I moved, yes. Hanako lives next door to me, so it's only natural, right? R right. It's very convenient that both of them live near each other when it comes to the dormitories, because there's some um, means of being able to get from A to B with as little amount of shyness as possible, or to prevent the maximization of that shyness being able to scare Hanako away. Living next to someone is probably reason enough to befriend them, for I'm guessing that Lily's blindness played a part in it as well, yeah. The lack of being able to see what's on Hanako's face is probably some kind of comfort for, um, for Hanako, because if Liddy can't see what condition Hanako has, then it doesn't make Hanako as intimidated because of the fact that people aren't staring at her condition of their blind. It's a very morbid way of looking at it, but it does play a part if you have that kind of condition. It's similar to two different characters in a game called Venus and Probable Dream where one of the characters is blind and the other person has like a birth defect on their face. And it's kind of the fact that it wasn't because the fact that they're blind, which was the reason why they became friends, but it was the initial reason as to how the protagonist made a friend in the first instance. I can't imagine Hako easily making friends with someone who has to deliberately avoid looking at her scars. With the immediate conversation dried up, we start to eat our lunch. And lunch goes swimmingly well. It isn't long before a bell is signaling the end of a break. Like me, the girls pick up their lunches as efficiently as they set them out. I guess I'd better be off. Are you going to go with Hanaso, Hanako? Hanako looks up at me, and for a second I can see that she's considering skipping class. Maybe just to avoid walking to the classroom with me. Yes. I don't know what to think of it. Hanako really is delicate to the point of breaking if looked at in the wrong way. It makes me a bit nervous too, but I push Athena aside, trying to be as neutral as I can. We should hurry then. Class has already started by the sound of it. Lily gives a nod of farewell as she bends down to take her cane, and Akra and I finding out before her. We walk quickly down the empty halls to our respective classes. As we reach the door to Lily's 3-2 classroom, she turns towards me. Hi Sal, thank you for sharing lunch with us today. My pleasure, Lily. And Hanako. And with that, we part ways, Lily entering her classroom and, and leaving Hanako and me to make off to our own. She's still looking like she wants to run away. So, do you really want to go back to class now? Yes. Okay, then. She's trying her best. I feel I should say something more to her, but it's hard to come up with anything that would be appropriate and safe enough. And Lily was right. The more time we spend out here, the more explaining we have to do. 
I open the rear door to the class and we walk in. Oh gosh. Have you got something to say, teacher? However, as Nanko follows me in and closes the door, he simply nods to us and continues his lecture. This is the third time Hanako has had her truancy practically ignored. There's definitely something going on here. Hmm, we make our way to our seats and I notice that Misha and Shizny are both missing as well. I wonder if there's some sort of informal agreement with the staff, or if it is a perk afforded to the unique students of this school, or it's something student council related. Trying to make as little disturbance as I can, I extract the relevant textbooks from my bag and start catching up. The class goes on quietly. The teacher seems like an okay person despite the weird first impression I got, and the material is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre. It's as if he expects that everyone is a natural genius, which is not the case. I once went to a university to study computer game design, and I couldn't even get through halfway through the year before I found it just way, way too complicated. And one of the... Um, the guests that came in to teach us just expected everyone to be a perfectionist. And I really did not get along with him. This is the choice I made on my very first time playing through this game. And this shall be the choice that I'll make now. Come on, cut me and lay some slack. Hey, I'm the new guy, remember? It's not I could have done much even if I wanted. That's right, you should expect a transfer student to jump right into it on his first week. Lee taking my side feels oddly comforting, so I decided to back her up too. Yeah, you're being unreasonable with us both. <laughs> excuses, excuses, Miss Class Rep has had plenty of time to deal with her report, and we repeatedly offered you a position to help wishing council, but you refused to comment yourself to correct yourself to making the festival a success. Yeah, but as I said back then, I'm not sure if I don't have the time for this right now. No matter what I do, it will mean being drawn into a confrontation with Shizny. And that is what she wants. Whatever. Forget it. I turn my back at them. Nice play. Lily, class is going to be starting soon, so we can talk more later. I will tell Hanako you were looking for her. I can feel Shizny freezing. Maybe it's the first time she has ever been ignored in such a blunt manner. Thank you for that, Has Hi, Sal. I'll leave now, then. She gives me the sweetest smile I've seen all week, and turns the heels to make her exit. As soon as Lee walks out the door, I suddenly start feeling reluctant about turning to face Shizuni. I can feel her eyes burning to my back. I can't bring myself to look at her. She must be furious. I keep expecting Mish to say something to alleviate the tension, but it really is wanting too much. In the end, I go back to my seat and listen to the sound of Shizuni's footsteps as she marches out of the class. Of oh, out of the room, what the hell? She doesn't return to a few minutes before class. Oh dear. Hanaka doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the room. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I can see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. I have a bit of catching up to do, despite trying to keep up with my studies at the hospital, but I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes, instead of opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of chalk on blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I start to copy down the equations just to pass the time, even though they are right there in the textbook. <laughs> oh dear. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do, so I stay for a while reviewing what we covered in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with crowding the hallways. I notice Shizny and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Shizny sighs so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there's pent up anger in there. Mistress is trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down, whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business, and we do not want anything to do with it. She's decided to the point where her wrists crackle and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters, and then on top of that, she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. Lucky for her, the business soon finish and the girls sit down on their seats again. You need to find her. She was looking for you in the morning, but I guess you have missed each other. 
She waits a little without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure if it's a prop proper to ask such a answer such a question. Yeah, I can come with you, if it's okay. Hinako nods fractionally. Still on guard, her shoulders stiff like wood. I give a thing that she might be more comfortable by herself after all, but it's too late to back off now. She has this really troubled expression she seems to wear almost constantly. One that makes me constantly be on guard myself. I wonder why. I kind of understand why she always seems to be so weary. Or maybe more like why there could be a person like her. But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time soon. Were you planning to eat with Liddy? She nods slightly. So she must be trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd, just like the cafeteria's crowded during lunch. It's not as bad because dinner time is longer than, hour, than lunch hour, sorry. But I can understand why Hinako could be discouraged from go, going in. I pick up my bag and we take our leave. Hinako skips a little to meet my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. It doesn't take long for us to be walking at a comfortable pace down the hallway. Almost feels like we're going for a stroll together, something that I can't say I've really done before with a girl. Hinako doesn't seem to be thinking the same thing though, even though we are walking at the same pace. She never comes within arm's reach of mine. I guess she's still a little uncomfortable around me, given how shy she is. There doesn't seem to be much help in it, at least for now. By the time we arrive at the cafeteria, there's not much of a crowd there, but Liddy is nowhere to be seen. Hinako's head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked somewhere else already? J -j -j just at the library, I was reading. So she does spend the classes she skips at the library. Ah, so not exactly a thorough search then. Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in her own class like Shizuni said, right? R right. With the slightest of nods, Hinako agrees with my reasoning. God, she's been so awkward. <laughs> I don't think she chooses to be awkward, okay? It's like I need double-layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. Some small talk might help her become a little more used to me. A bit more used to it. It isn't hard to tell that the science between us is hovering on the edge of both of our minds. So you and Liddy usually hang out together after class, right? Yes. I'm not quite sure what I expected from her answer nor why I even asked the question. That much was obvious, rather obvious after all. She doesn't seem like the type to cultivate a social circle either, so I suspect that Liddy may well be her only friend. Must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a sharp, almost reflexive nod. Compared to Liddy's careful thought about her actions and speech, Hinako hastens to make her answers prompt and short as possible. Liddy comes by the classroom though, even when she's busy. She gives a small smile as she says it, evidently appreciating the fact that Liddy goes out of her way to help her. It's pretty cute really. There isn't any need to say more, both are content that the discussion's reached an end. As we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we are met by a group of students heading downstairs like a school of fish moving from one feeding area to another. They seem to be keeping mostly to themselves, but before I can notice her doing so, Hinako has moved around behind me. Hey, are you alright? Just keep going. I see what she means by that. Just get past this phase and then we can move on. The students pass us without as much as a second glance. Hinako tr takes up position to my side again as we enter the building. Her momentary reply from her anxiety all but snatched away. Even, if we see, even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've never known a shy person before, even shy girls, but Hanaka seems to be far beyond, pretty far beyond what I'd call normal in her fear of other people. If it weren't for Lily acting as a mediator, I doubt Hanako would have even been able to walk beside me like this. She seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of a walk up to Lily's classroom continues in strange silence while I rue her inability to socialise at all. Again, this is not something that Hanako chooses. After we make our way up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's classroom is audible from halfway down the hallway. I was like, wasn't expecting such a Dane after all. Well, I guess we found her. 
but this wasn't hard. Did Hanako come here first, then come to me for backup, I wonder? Well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. That can only be a good thing. Eventually, the two of us reach the door to class 3-2. With Hanako less than subtly positioning herself behind me, I open the door. Inside is a hive of activity, and a different classroom altogether. Naturally. Seemingly, every student in the classroom tapes were talking at once as they work hurriedly on their separate tasks. This could be like a geography room, considering the globe to the right-hand side. Going by the paint cans, decorations, and banners being made, it must be for the upcoming school school festival, sorry. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. There. Find her among the den is surprisingly easy, not the least because of her looks. Lily is, I think, the tallest out of the girls in this game. With a couple of students gathered around her, she stands at the front of the class. She seems to be in charge of her preparations, or at least busy organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the various students hunched over the floor for lack of desk space. I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Do you realize the awkwardness of doing that? She can't see your hand. Hi, Lily. She perks her head up as she breaks off talking to a noticeably smaller girl who must be her classmate, trying to listen as best she can. Sorry, who? Ah, uh, sorry. Hi, so I have Hanako too. Hello. Uh, hi. She's pretty skittish. Considering the number of people around, it isn't too hard to work out why. Lily takes a moment's pause to assess the situation before turning to the other student once again. For a moment, just ask Moraya for his advice. Kenji's busy with painting one of the banners already. Kenji even, huh? A quick nod and she bounces off, fingers carefully sliding along the wall's face for orientation. Wait, Kenji? That Kenji? I'll quickly turn around and lean to the side to see past Hanako. Sure enough, in the corner of the room, Kenji's hunched over a sheet of cloth as he paints it. His eyes remain only inches from the brush, reminding me of how close he had to be to make out my face when I met him. Sorry about that. Our class doesn't have many students with even partial eyesight, so they're in high demand. That's right. Class 3-2 was especially for students with poor vision. Preparing for the festival must be pretty arduous for them. Need a hand? I could give you help if you need some. Maybe Hinako could too? A, a chance to set her mind on something would do her good, but I doubt she has the courage to ask outright. She quickly nods in, in, in affirmation afterwards, so I'm confident I made the right move. Lee gives a notable sigh of relief. Ah, that's good. This might actually get finished before everyone goes off to dinner now. Would you be able to help the person painting the main banner? It's a big task for him to do, but nobody else can help. Kenji? Sure. She seems surprised that I know him. I can't really blame her. I take it you've met. Our rooms in a dorm are right next to each other. Hard to miss each other, really. Well, it's good to see you're both... You're getting friends so fast. I wouldn't consider Kenji a friend, just more of an acquaintance. Friend, I wonder if that's the right word to use for him. Hinako's signs during the proceedings remind me of the reason I put her up to help in the first place. It distracts from the matter that people might be looking at you if you're actually focused on something else other than your own surroundings. We'll go help him then. He knows what needs doing, right? That's right, just ask if you have any problems. Thank you, Lily. Curiosing in a scent, Hanako and I begin another trek across the classroom. Kenji sits crouched on the floor, his gaze fixed on the white calacea canister in front of him. Hey Kenji. No answer, he continues dragging his paint-soaked brush along the large, half-painted kanji that's sketched on the sheet in pencil. Kenji? Huh? What? Who is it? If this is the way he treats class members, it's no small wonder he's working on this alone. It's me, hi Sal, R -r -r right, right, I know that. Man, what are you doing here, though? His dismissive attitude annoys me. He must be the type to really get focused on his work. Hates to be disturbed by anyone until he's done, I suppose. Uh, while we talk, the sound of Hinako's footsteps as she walks out from behind me reminds me that she's here. 
I was going to help with a banner. Hinaka and I, that is. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hey, I guess that's okay. As soon as Hinako enters the equation, his dominion takes a complete about face. His sudden flux hostility is slightly unsettling. All right, women on second thoughts, it might not be a great idea after all. Hinako and I grudgingly set ourselves down on the opposite side of a cloth banner to Kenji, noting the several small paint tins on the ground around it. Class 3-2. Noodle stall? You guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? <laughs> yeah, some stalls outside. Or something. Or something. His non-commercial nature sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. Dis the task ahead comes first, though. So how do you want to split this? We do borders while you do the text, or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine, you do borders. He has surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. Well, at least we know our tasks, Ben, rather than trying to do like a brainstorm of like, okay, we've got this person who's good at this thing, and this person who's good at that thing. So I think we should all collab our ideas together and see, and get a vote together as to see who is actually the best at this kind of task. No, that takes too long. No, I do text, you do borders. Like, there are advantages and disadvantages to both methods. I notice Hanako is already debating between colours to use. Uh, by the time I've put, I've put brush to cloth, she's already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her off, taking her mind off everyone around her worked. With a dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanako's working to lean towards me and whisper conspiratorially, though. Okay, man, why are you here? Hanako just wanted to help, some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently disapproves of my motivations. I get it, it looks like I misjudged you. You're inf infiltrated them, aren't you? Going deep to cover. That's not it, Kenji! Finished. Looks like I'm too. Good job. The two of us connect up the lines of our patterns, mine being as close a copy as I could manage to of hers. With a grunt, I leave myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Hanako and myself, there's only Kenji left finishing off a sign as well as Lily and a couple of students talking among themselves in the classroom. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise. It's getting pretty late. Well, the clock says it's about 12 o'clock, for goodness sakes. Need a hand? I offer a hand to Hanako which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glints at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was... burnt? Are you assuming that she was burnt then, which is why this was the very thing that caused Hanako to have this eternal scarring? I feel a pain of guilt about it, however, she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. Looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment before noticing what I mean about Exactly! It does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, just as I do. With a floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks and sleeves, shelves, sorry, it's much easier to get lit to Lily as we cross the room. We finish the banner! I guess that's all that needs to be done. Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Hisao. Hinako. Is there any way I can thank you? It's fine. Be sitting in my room studying, at any rate. <laughs> I don't mind either. She nods, before suddenly rem remembering one last person. Oh, is Kenji still there? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, just finished. He carefully slides a sign onto an empty section of sh shelf to dry before quickly walking past us and out of the door. Hmm. See ya, man. Bye. The remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope we didn't have to do anything like that again. <laughs> Working past school time? Indeed, the class's plans this year were ambitious. Maybe too ambitious. The stores look nice, though. She's right, it shows that a lot of work's gone into them. <laughs> my, my. I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now, there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it's getting pretty late. Should we go? 
That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hysel? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. The nighttime lighting really makes the gardens look quite different compared to the usual look of lush greenery. Things are much more calm. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms trying to eke the most out of their approaching curfews but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps. In addition to Liddy's cane regularly gently so regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. <laughs> Tired? Yeah, still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The uh thing with Shizney took me off took me kind of off guard though. I gripped my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. It's probably best not to. Ah, uh, about that. I'm sorry about it being so public. Shizzy and I go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she rem remembers Shizney, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glance at Hanaka for her views on this, but her expression is, unsurprisingly, evasive and difficult to read. Either I guess her apologizing for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. I'll be glad once the festival is over, in any case. The change of topics welcome, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine, my old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamako stresses the idea of a school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals and such special occasions. And yet the students are the ones who do the work. What an unfair world! I wouldn't say that that's the case! <laughs> Hanaka and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savoring the fact that none of the staff are around to hear our grumbling. <laughs> I suppose coming from a, from a strict all-girls school helps me a bit with Yamako. Compared to that, Yamako is much more relaxed. That go away towards explain her well-bred speech and behavior. In any case, as we come up to the dormitories, it eventually comes time to leave for our respective rooms. See ya, Lily and Hanako. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the women's dorms just next to the guys. As is to be expected of such an arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around outside within any nighttime shenanigans. Walking past them, I quickly stretch my arms and rub my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long before walking into my room. It feels good to actually have direction though, after so long in the hospital. The everyday facts of studying, homework and teachers seem almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaka might turn out okay. Uh, what do you mean okay? It'll be more than just okay, okay? I wonder what will happen if we decide not to, um, talk about it. I I'm fine. There's nothing to worry about. The hero's just surprisingly steep, don't you think? I wonder what they have the school so high up here for anyway. Don't we have students in wheelchairs and everything? Indeed. Lee's forehead wrinkles in concern. I don't really want her to have that kind of an expression over me. We barely know each other. Yeah, if my thoughts exactly. Not that you can find a place like this wherever, I guess, but it makes me wonder what they were thinking. My voice is overly calm. It sounds weird to my own ear and I speak way too fast. I probably wonder how much Liddy can sense from someone's voice alone. Hmm. Let's continue. We're almost there anyway. For the rest of the way back to the school, we all remain silent. After about 10 minutes of restlessly shuffling her seat and trying to read, Hanako closes her book and leaves too. As should I, since the assignment is all but finished and there is nothing else to do in the classroom. Not really feeling energetic, I just go straight to my room and read for the rest of the day. Hmm. Not feeling energetic, you say? Hmm, I wonder if being more concerning should have led to a better path because this feels kind of very apocalyptic at, soon, at some point, sorry. The next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. Sleeping late is fine since it's Sunday and there are no classes. 
not just a Sunday though, but a festival as well. From my window I can already see some people at the sober booth slinging noodles onto plates for people with a craving of for low quality food. Okay. All that leads to a kanji route, so we should be more honest with ourselves. It's alright. I just need to catch my breath. My condition is the best these days. Oh? Is this something that is related to you being transferred here? I mean... She cuts herself off rather abruptly, abruptly so I made me realise she was being a bit intrusive. Her instincts are sharp though, and while I don't like the subject, it's not related I should... It's not that I... Sorry. And while I don't like the subject, it's not like I should lie about it. If it's Lily, then I don't mind. I'm just a little weak for the time being. Hanako says you look fairly healthy, so I now she thought... Lee doesn't finish her sentence again. Let it trail off with a measure of concern. As she frowns her brow, Lily's uncomfortable expression spurs me to say at least something to ease her feelings. It's surprising she's this flustered, Considering her straightforward attitude with her own blindness, she must know that not all share her own comfort about such means. No, it's okay. I have a pretty... I guess the best way to put it would be messed up heart. And with Mia. I have a heart... Sorry, I had a bad heart attack a while ago because of it. And spent most of a spring in hospital. Ended in Yamako. So it ended in Yamako on doctor's orders. She slightly nods her head in acknowledgement. My answer, though, only seems to make Lily furrow her brow even further. She doesn't seem to quite know how to react, given we don't really know each other that well. I can't really fault her for it, given I have the exact same reaction. To my surprise, in a moment's time, her face shows that she comes to some sort of realisation. Wait, so the time when Emmy and you collided in the hallway... I grimace slightly. Her ability to connect the dots quite so fast is unexpected. Yeah, I guess I'm a textbook example of why those rules about running the corridors exist. That was a lot more dry than I intended. Lily visibly shies away from continuing the topic. While I do want to assuage her concern, I really, really don't want to dwell on this either. Don't worry about it. I try to offer a reassuring smile, but then I realise the futility. Without knowing this, Lily smiles at me reassuringly but doesn't say anything further. Oh dearie me. But why would Lily leave her to her own devices? Seems to be quite out of the ordinary, going by Hinako's reaction. Hmm, ah oh, that's right, I think Lily mentioned something about going into town today before Rim bumped into us. Before of that, walk makes me look outside. The bright sun and occasional people wandering around enjoying the afternoon makes me yearn to get out of school, or at least do something other than sit here. Given into one of my worst vices, procrastination, I decide that history is a subject best studied on a Sunday, or a Monday, or on any day other than this one. I give a grunt as I leave it outside of my seat, briefly debating with myself whether or not to hang out with Kenji. DON'T! He doesn't strike me as we enjoy the nice weather outside with others kind of person, really. I guess I'll catch up with him later. Changing tacks, I briefly entertain the idea of talking with Hanako, but by the time I look at her seat, it's vacant. She must have left for the library. There's gotta be something that... Well, something to do that can kill the time. Go to the library, or walk into town. Go into the library or walk into town. Go for a walk into town or go to the library. We will go with a more library option. The library seems as good a place as any to go. Hanaka looked as if she was taken pretty off guard by Lily leaving, so she might want someone to talk to. Sling my bag over my shoulder and make my way out of the classroom. I walk down the hallway to the library, past a multitude of closed doors. Through each one, the sound of furious rehearsal can be heard. Rock music blares out of one door, almost as loud as a concert. I guess that's one of the advantages of a private school. There are actually enough rooms to go around at a time like this. And when I think about it, the grounds and buildings of the school are kept in pretty good condition. That can't be too cheap. Too cheap. I've heard that this place has some pretty serious benefactors. 
The walls of the library only partially insulate the noise of the festival preparations, but they're only the sounds. So, but there be any sounds to be heard. Now, Sol steers here, with everyone apparently enjoying the weather outside or working on festival events. Yuko isn't here either. Maybe she doesn't work on Saturdays. I quietly walk through the library, now familiar, f fairly familiar with its layout. I head to the back where Hinako's private little corner is. I run my head along the spines of the books on the way through, feeling the individual texture of each as I glance across the titles. I used to do this all the time at the library at the hospital. Some things never change, I guess. Like the smell of the library. No matter how much care you take, the paper in books is always going to degrade with them. Probably, no matter which library you go into, anywhere in the, li in the world, it must have that same musty smell. I find something that looks light enough to read without any major thought involved, then look for Hanako in the reading area. And there she is again! Once again she is sitting on a beanbag with her back to a bookshelf, reading the same book she'd had in the classroom. She's slowly making her way through the pages. Unlike last time I saw her, I quietly take a seat in a beanbag, but noise enough to catch her attention but not startle her. This delicate routine that must be followed each and every time I try to talk to her almost feels like a hunting game. Is that the same book as before? Yes, I'm almost finished. Cool. I wonder if I should... Do you mind if I borrow it when you're finished? My mouth is faster than my mind is. <laughs> sure. You may not like it, but... I'm sure it can't be that bad. After all, you suck with it, haven't you? I guess... I settled into my beanbag and set about reading my own book that had been buried in my bag. It's a light novel about pirates. To be honest, I'm barely skimming over the words, having chosen the book merely because it belongs to a different genre that I usually read. Find it hard to muster enough enthusiasm to finish the book and note that I've inadvertently distracted Hanako quite a bit. I was trying, uh, so I decided to try to make conversation. So, I see Lily left without you. She nods before taking her eyes off of her book. She must have really been into it after all. Lily said she had to go and meet someone. Oh? Akira, her sister. Sister? I haven't heard her talk about her family. She... She and Akira used to live there together. I thought all Russians lived in dorms. They... I mean, we don't have to. But it's easier, right? I mean, there's food here and you're close to school. I don't think I've ever been to class on time so often in my life. <laughs> Her badly hidden smile proves quite rewarding. <laughs> in the back of my mind, I know I have a bit of homework to catch up on, but it's quite comfortable in here. No one can find me and force me to work in for their pet project either. Though now that I'm thinking about the festival, another question comes up. Hey Hanako, what are you doing for the festival? For a split second, I think that Hanako is about to throw her book in the air from shock. S sorry I was just asking what you're doing for the festival tomorrow. Anything planned? I... I don't know. Hanako answers in a way that people do when they don't want you to ask any more questions. I take it large crowds and loud music aren't really her thing. Oh, uh, okay. Change the subject, change the subject. So, what's Lily's sister like? She's nice. I didn't mean to do that. Return. She's pretty like Lily, but she stresses business-like. Business-like? Yeah, we discovered that within Shizuni's route. She, she's always wearing a suit. Ah, I see. And that makes her less pretty somehow? Hanako gives an embarrassed shake of her head. N no, just different. I'll admit it. This got me intrigued. To hear Nako talk about someone other than Lily is a first, and to be complimentary about it too. But as I try to picture this mystery sister, all I can think of is Lily in a suit, and I can't imagine that not being a tr What do you mean? That's no, that's no good, that's rude. Well, one day you have to introduce me to- <laughs> Okay. Our brief conversation ends as abruptly as it started, and we both return to our novels. Oh dear, the passage of time is marked only by the gradual movement of a patch of light cast through the window, 
and the amount of flickers of our books. Slowly the noise of Bavaria's rehearsals in the building fade out and die as students start to get hungry and tired. Just think about that makes my stomach start to turn knots around itself. I think it's time to head back. Do you think Lily would be back by now? I think I might head back to my dorm. I'm pretty tired from this week. And not a word of that is a lie. Moving to a new school as it ramps up for a major event has been taxing to say the least. I can feel myself nodding as I read my book. Okay, I... I might stay here a little longer. Look at Hanako's book, I can see that she is only a few pages away from completing it. For a moment, I consider hanging her around until she finishes, but once again my stomach turns, emitting a gargling sound. Sure thing. Well, I'm going to head off before it gets dark. I'll see you around, okay? Okay. See you, hi, Sal. Later. H hi, Sal. Hmm? F thank you for hanging out with me. I can see how hard it was for her to get that simple sentence out of her mouth. It leaves me hanging for a moment. Like, the impossible has happened. But it's in a good way. So, there is someone in this school who is even lonelier than me. Maybe lonely is the wrong word. I haven't been lacking company for, the f for this first week, but I've still managed to feel somewhat alone and detached. Maybe lonely is a wrong word for Hanako too. She has Lily after all. Doesn't she? I realise I've been standing here far too long without answering pull off a flawless, not too exaggerated smile. You're welcome. Good night, Hanako. Night. <laughs> I'll leave her to finish her book and head back to the dorms and the promise of food. She's really sweet. In her own ways. After buying a placid plate of tagiyaki from a store belonging to the class next to ours, I take a seat in the school grounds and watch people pass as I tentatively nibble away at a rather bland tasting item. I guess I shouldn't complain, it's better than nothing and didn't cost much. As I look out towards the school watching the people coming and going provides a surprisingly entertaining way of passing the time as I eat. Little children accompanied by parents or grandparents scamper about in the dim form Sorry, in the den from event to event, one hand dragging their company and the other bearing an oversized colourful snack. I can't help but notice the age range among the people here is skewed towards the elderly, something that I'd also noticed when I was walking around town. This must be one of the towns where the only people left are those that lived here their whole lives and ardently refused to leave, and those ones that live out the rest of their days in one of the increasingly few tranquil places places. I guess that also goes a way to explain how conservative Yamako's school culture seems to be. Not that I mind one bit, I kind of like how calm Yamako and its surroundings are. The heat though is another matter entirely. Sitting in one place for so long has focused my mind how annoyedly humid it's getting. Now that the hottest part of the day is here. I beg a moon if I... The sound of the Carlene bells takes me completely by surprise as I stand up. A reaction shared by a few people strolling around as well. The PA system crackles to life after the tolling bells ends. Its age shows as the principal makes a barely intelligible announcement over it. Officially opening the festival that's very much in full swing. It's quite amusing to contrast the pleasant smiles of the older folk against the alternatively pained and bored grimaces of their younger charges. The students, on the other hand, seem to pay it little heed. Nevertheless, as the address finally ends, all are united and polite. Not, or sorry, if not overly enthusiastic applause, the main gets back to business. Slip the hand in my pocket to look as relaxed as possible. I casually glance around for something to do. It's somewhat difficult to see very far with all the people around. I decide to fall back on a, on a tired and trusted rule. Go wherever everyone else seems to be gathering. Right now, that's the school courtyard and surroundings. Throwing the used plate into a trash can, I make my way towards the school building. Seeing the number of stores around the perimeter of the school building surprises me. Quite a few of the classes must have opted to have multiple stores. In deciding which to visit first, I catch sight of a familiar banner with a blue pattern border and red text. Lady store is as good a place to start as any. I'm curious to how it's going after all of the work she and her class have been doing for it. Stepping up to it, I begin to see why the class took so long to organize everything. 
easily twice as wide as many of the other stalls and with equipment for cooking strewn out everywhere. It's close to an outside, sorry, outdoor restaurant and festival event. As a student in front of me takes a bowl of noodles and leaves, I walk up to the counter. The girl behind it seems quite exasperated and asks me to wait a moment before she disappears underneath the counter. Seize a moment, I take a quick glance around. Steam seems to be rising from everywhere as pots and pans simmer away. The most blind of the students are unpacking ingredients while being helped by someone who is probably the teacher of class 3 too. It doesn't take long to notice Lydia Mombum talking with a teacher as she quickly counts out the box, so boxing packets with her fingers. For my expression, the fact that both she and the teacher seem to be in a state of mild confusion, it appears that there has been some problem with coordination. Before I can stay any longer, the girl behind the counter pops up again. I need to look back and ask where the spare change box is. Lee pauses for a moment before she and the girl switch places in the counter and the teacher quickly walks off somewhere. Sorry about that, we have a few problems. What would you like? Aha, uh -huh. it takes me a second to remember what I'd come here for. My eyes quickly dart to the side to read the menu sitting on the counter. Oh, uh, I guess some um, miso soup? Oh, is that high, Sal? Yep, looks like you're pretty busy. Her face all but confirms it as she drops her waitress facade. Somewhere along the line, our order got mixed up. We're trying to fix it now, but it looks like we only have half of what we needed. Wouldn't serving smaller portions cover over the problem? It's more like half the ingredients. It seems like that's what we'll have to do. But I wish we didn't. The fact that good, sorry, that a good half of our class is gone doesn't help either. I glance behind to see how many people are actually operating the store. It couldn't be over about eight. I take it that's why your teacher left. That's right. She's going to try and round up a few more of our classmates to help. Hearing the sound of footsteps behind me, I stealthily glance backwards to see an elderly couple taking a place in the line. I guess I better stop loitering around and chatting. Here's the money for the soup. Soup? Oh right, coming right up. I Lily turns and calls for a bowl of miso soup as I hand over the money for it. Taking the coins in her palm, I can't help but notice how efficiently she counts them out with her long pale fingers. Eventually satisfied that I've handed over correct change, she puts it into a small metal tray. It isn't long before the soup is made and carefully handed to her, after which she turns and subsequently passes it to me. Thanks. I'll come back to drop off the bowl. But thank you, Haisa. Oh, there is one other thing. Have you seen Hanako? Hanako? No, not today. Why? She gives a small sigh of abject disappointment. It's okay. I was just wondering what she was doing for the festival. You'll come back when you're done, then. Sure, I'll keep an eye for Hanako, too. Thank you, Hi Sal. I'll walk off from the store to find a seat, carefully creating the steaming wooden bowl in both hands. Compared to the dumplings one before, this is quite nice. A little cool compared to what it probably should be, perhaps, but the flavour is enough to cover for that reasonably well. As I drink, I can't help but feel somewhat guilty for not being as involved in the festival as the others. It can't really be helped, considering I was dropped into a school only a week ago. But it still weighs heavily in my mind. Fan of fan of students don't really seem to be enjoying the festival as much as the visitors. Eventually, I finish my bowl and leave the store to drop it off. Considering the there seems to be no line at all, I take my time w walking up. <laughs> it seems the teacher's mission paid off. There are now over a dozen students helping and much of the unpacking has been done. Despite most of them seeming quite relaxed as they work, Lily still appears to be somewhat stressed. Lily doesn't look impressed at all, and I can't really blame her. On top of her issues with her store, she, seems some, she still seems to be worried about Hanako. I can't really help with the former, so I guess the only way I can help is by trying to take her mind off of our shy mutual friend. Place her bowl back on the counter, I call out to Lily. Lily! Hey Lily, don't worry about Hanako. I'll go find her and hang out with her, okay? I can see Lily's relief plainly written across her face. Thanks, Hi Sal. And if you see anyone from my class, can you tell them to come back here, please? Will do. Have a good one. And make sure you take a break, okay? I will if I can. See you later, Hi Sal. Thank you. I'll leave Lily in the store head out in search of Hanako. In a way, I feel bad for leaving her with the crowds, but even though she was clearly under pressure, I can't help but think that she is enjoying herself. 
The halls are packed with swaying crowds meandering through the festival. If there's one thing I know about Hanako is that she's not going to be anywhere near this. And with the students showing their friends and family their dorms, I doubt she'll be there either. Following blind intuition, I move against the grain of the crowd. Thankfully, this crowd seems to be slightly less festive than your usual festive festival crowd. I assume this is out of consideration for the student body. As I force my way through the masses, it doesn't take long for them to thin down into nothingness. And this is not surprising since I am standing before the library. Even most eager students don't bother to show anyone this section of the school, which would be very bad considering the library is such an important aspect of students' lives. As I enter the library, the noise of the festival fades into a dull background noise, and as soon as I am in the reading area at the rear of the room, behind one of the partition desks I see the top of a head with straight dark hair catching my eye. Hey Hanako, I don't think I'd find you here. The head jumps a little in shock before slowly peering over the partition. <laughs> Hi Sal? Hey, that has been pretty busy, so she sent me to find you. Uh oh, do you want to sit down? Actually, I am feeling a little hungry. How hungry are you? You've had two meals already. Would you like to get something to eat from one of the stands? Um, I brought some food, so... I shouldn't be surprised, but it was worth a try. Expecting her to go outside today was a long shot. How about we eat in the tea room? I passed by on the way here, and no one was around. We can make some food there, and it'll be a little more comfortable. What do you say? S sure, let's go. Hanako closes the book and puts it away with deliberate practice mo movement, sorry. Good to go? Yeah. We walk side by side from the library to the tea room. As expected, there is barely a soul around. If it weren't for the murmurs through the walls, you wouldn't tell that there was a huge festival going on outside. Hanako carries her bag in both hands and focuses on just the floor ahead of us. Every now and again, she seems to break her pace as on steps in slightly sort of pace, shorter paces. The first time it happened, I gave it no mind, but I soon noticed that she does it on a regular basis. Are you alright? She stops dead in her tracks. But what? I don't know. It looked like you were tripping on something. A pink blush rises into her cheeks as her gaze returns to the floor. It, it's nothing. You know, when you say nothing like that, people are inspired to ask further questions. For a second, I don't think she's going to answer. Prepare to leave her behind, I almost set off walking again when... It's a... A game. Game? Do you see the floor here? What a bizarre question. The floor looks just like any other floor, covered in those tiles made up from squares of linum. Nothing noteworthy. Well, yes, what about here? Sometimes, when there's no one around, I only step on the darker ones. Hinagra's voice trails off as, she ex as her explanation continues, I can until I can barely hear her voice over the roaring silence of the empty hall. Darker ones? Shuffling her feet, Hanako points the toe of her shoe at a tile that is barely a shade darker than the others. Like these ones. Oh, right. So these ones are no good. I point out a nearby tile. Yeah, something, something like that. Oh, I see. Do you play this game a lot? Hanako shakes her head. Just when the halls are empty? She nods. Well then, no point in stopping. I'm beginning to get really hungry. She nods again, this time with a little more enthusiasm. Well then, let's go. Let us a go. We set off down the hall, and this time I notice that Hanako is paying a little less attention to the floor. I wonder, just how lonely does someone have to be to come up with a game like that? Again, I don't think the loneliness is by choice. But before I realised what I was doing, I find myself trying to aim each step so it lands on- STOP IT YOU IT'S CONTAGIOUS! The noise of the festival was slightly louder inside the tea room, but the breeze coming through the window, open window makes it worth it. Worth thinking I walked to the window so inhaled deeply, I sometimes forget how clean the air is here compared to back home. Well number one we are on the top of a hill so therefore you would get the most amount of fresh air. But number two is this nice. This is nice. Do you, would you like some tea? 
That would be great, thanks. It occurs to me that this is the first time I've been alone with Hinako without her trying to be somewhere else. Turning from the window, I watch as she makes a simple pot of tea and arranges some sandwiches onto a plate. I've seen her do this before a number of times, but this time she seems slightly different. It's like she's... calm. Eventually she places the small tray on the table and pours two cups of tea. The fresh scent of brewed tea mingles with the breeze for a second. So, and for a second, I feel like I'm the only one in the world. I think I know why you like this room now. Um, I don't know what you mean. Well, there are quite a few people out there, but in here it's like another world. You can pretend that there's no one around for miles. You're right. It's like the world has forgotten this room. And b b because of that, you can forget about the outside. That would be appealing in some cases. As far, as far as I can tell, conventional bullying doesn't exist in this school. But then again, I haven't seen a single person talk to Hinako besides Lily. If you're ignored by the world, a place where you can forget its existence will hold a special appeal. That's a good point. It's like this room gives you some kind of complete freedom. Yeah. Say, do you play chess? Chess, I've played it a bit, I guess. I take it you've played before? A little. Without saying anything more, Hinako moves to one of the cupboards and digs out a small chest there. Do, do you want? Sure, why not? I cut her off, but she doesn't seem to mind it. We're playing a game of chess, we arrange for pieces, and before long we are sending pawns charged into their inevitable fate. <laughs> ah, ah. I take my time and intently examine each move and its consequences, nostalgia from the game taking second place to the matters at hand. For a time the game is a lengthy battle of attrition, but I spot an opening and tear a line in her defence. A few moves later, her keen is cornered by several of my pieces. Jetmate! You're not bad at this, are you? An honest appraisal. Her technique is pretty good, but several times I was able to exploit her lack of prediction. It's always about reading a few moves ahead rather than looking at one move ahead. Otherwise, you'll never be able to win the game. I pick up a piece and examine it. It looks relatively new. Yet warm for its age. Maybe it's been barely used, which is why it looks pristine and stuff like that. Like when you have something for so long but you don't ever use it, it preserves its age in a way. As long as it doesn't actually bear the elements of weather, like rain or just the wind in general. If it's just a completely still room. I guess not. Does he play? The absence of Hanako's answer caused me to think about my question. A, a bit. This is the first time I played against someone other than her, or, or she cuts herself off abruptly, leaving the answer in the air. Someone she knew before coming to Yamako, maybe. Well then, I'm honoured to have played against you. Um, can we play again? She asked if she were asking me to cut off my own hands. The spirit of competition has got it into her. Sure, but don't expect me to go easy on you this time. Not that I was before, mind. She seems to appreciate the competitive tone. S same here. <laughs> ah, as we are setting up the pieces, there's a noise at the door. Hello, Lily. Good afternoon. Lily? Oh, hey, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, hey there, Lily. Are you finished? You both are here? Wonderful. At any rate, our teacher managed to round up some extra help, so I was able to leave. Have you been here since you left? Pretty much. We've just been playing a bit of chess. Would you like a cup of tea? Actually, I think it may be a good idea to go outside for a little while. The instant drop in Hanako's face shows her objection to this plan, even though she says nothing. I feel strangely compelled to voice what is plainly in view on her face, but Lily can't see. I... I kind of think that we should just stay here. Really? It's so crowded here that I was thinking we should leave the school and head to, for the local tea house. You mean the, the sh Shane High? Of course. We're very not festival. It should be practically empty. Tea house? Oh, that's why you probably don't know of it. There is a tea house not not far from here, which we go to every so often. Sounds like a plan, Hanako. What do you think? 
Hinako jumps a little at being forced into a conversation, but at least she seems less distraught than before. If it's a Shane High, I think it'll be nice. Well then, it's settled. Let's be in our way. Hinako and I raise from the table in our preempted chess game. Before I can do anything, Hinako has poured a piece into a small container and placed the board away. Looks like we're ready now. Please lead on. Okay, folks, I think we're going to leave things off here. I definitely feel that the choice when it comes to either going to the library or going to town, I think was the deciding factor between Lily's and Hanako's route within this game. Because if we didn't go to the library, then we wouldn't... So, if we did go to the library, we would see Hanako. If we didn't go to the library, then we wouldn't have seen Hanako. But if we went into town then the only other anomaly that could have been put into factor here is the fact that we would have encountered Lily in town instead. But thank you so much for watching, guys, and we shall see each other in the next time of Katara Sojo. I'm very glad to be back on this game, and glad that the chaos of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus has been eviated, elevated, whichever word is correct. Thank you so much for watching, and take care of yourselves.